A couple weeks ago, I posted a video detailing two ways to go about making a cup, a simple pulled cup. You can find the link in the description below if you haven't seen it already, but either way, I thought a good follow-up to that video would be a, uh, a one showing three different ways for making a cooling tower. That is a shape that has kind of a, a inside curve that runs through its entire form, whether that's sort of symmetrical about the midpoint or more like a, a Pilsner glass where that uh, thinnest point is closer to one side or the other. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can play around with the proportions, but just like with the pulled cup video, in showing you three different ways to get to what very well could be the exact same end result, my hope is to deepen your understanding of the glass blowing process, to maybe move away from looking at making something as just following a, a sequence of steps to um, evolving based on what that material is feeding you, to really relating to the way that glass wants to move. So that's the basic idea, and uh, there are three ways that, though they have similarities, are going to be sort of fundamentally different. And the first of these ways involves blowing a bubble that's uh, more or less uniform, then cutting in a quick constriction while it's still really hot and relatively thick, then stretching that out, and if everything is evenly hot, evenly thick, it should sort of stretch in proportion to where that uh, material is, and then blowing it up to its full size. Let's take a look. So here I've just gotten a gather and I'm going to use the rails like a little mini marver just to squeeze some material off the end. Um, then I'm going to block it up and uh, yeah, so just blocking it up nice, looking for proportions that are about as wide as they are long for that massive glass so that when I blow into it, the bubble will fill the, that space up evenly and create an even thickness shape. That's something I talk about in another video that's on YouTube. That's about how to make a starter bubble. It's really about setting up those proportions to set up the thicknesses how you want, which, like I said, should be even more or less for this. I did put a little bit more of a point on this shape uh, right there at the very tip in order to keep a little more material there right where you'll punty up. But I'm shooting for something that's really more or less even. And actually, it was a little more material on the bottom than I wanted, so. I'm blowing again right here just to make fill out the bubble a little bit more, make it a little more round. Now I'm going to stretch out the shape and use the jacks to straighten up the profile so I can really tell where I want to cut in that jack line. So straighten it up, make it cylindrical, and then it'll be more obvious where to cut that line in, whether I want that in the very middle or more to one side versus another because those are setting proportions of the final shape. The biggest challenge here is just making sure that your left and right hand move together at the same rate so you keep that jack line, that sharp line, on center when you're cutting it in. If you don't keep that on center, the shape is going to wobble. But then up into the glory hole, then I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. You can see everything stretching evenly. Now I'm going to blow into it, and you can see everything inflating evenly, both the bottom, the top, even that constriction in the middle, although using the jacks on the glass right there does cool it off a little bit, so you can sometimes factor that in. It's also a little thicker right next to the pipe. Right there, it's a little thicker, and that material, though, is holding heat, which means it's easier to cut in the jack line. Straighten up the bubble again, and now that's pretty much it. We do have to flatten the bottom for going for like a real cooling tower hourglass sort of shape, and um, this is something else I talk about in the pulled cups video. You can either do that using an assistant with a paddle, like a blow hose or something, or you can also use spin. So here I'm just heating the bottom and spinning the pipe fast enough that as that material gets hot, it gets flung out to the sides and it pretty much automatically sets a flat bottom all on its own. Just about how deep you heat and how fast you spin. But here you can see that. There you go. And now I'm just going to use the jacks to chew up the shape, starting in the middle and spinning fast while working my way towards that flat bottom, letting the jacks open up a little bit as they get closer to the edge, and I draw that curve. You can kind of see that just sort of drawing that line with the jacks. So that's one way that you could go about making this shape. Method two is a little bit slower. It involves blowing a, a ball, more or less, that is not an even thickness but goes from thinner to thicker and then back again. And what that allows you to do is take a heat on the bottom half of that bubble and then stretch out all that thick material into your sides. You get a heat, 
you hold it down, maybe stretch it pretty aggressively so that all that material starts to pull out and set you up for the start of that curvature. Maybe this happens in one go, maybe it's two or three heats, but either way you're stretching out this long form with the idea that that thickest bottom part is just moving all the way down to the bottom of the form with you. That allows you to then heat the bottom part of it or otherwise just blow it up to establish that curve coming back out. Let's take a look at that. So here we are with another gather and another roll on the rails just to squeeze a little more material off and I'm going to block it again. But this time I'm going to block it into a shape that's longer than it is wide. So on method one I wanted to keep those proportions about the same as wide as it was long so that the bubble filled it up evenly. But on this one I'm holding it down a little bit more and I'm using the pressure of that block a little more just to set up a shape that will force the glass to blow thin right next to the pipe and leave extra thickness at the bottom and you can see that happen right there. That's all the result of longer shape. It goes thin to thick and back again and that leaves me with that extra material that I need down there to stretch out and become the majority of this form. So a quick reheat just to get those thin parts hot again and allow me to blow this thing up into a little bit of a bigger ball. That's happening right here and you can tell it's inflating everywhere but keeping those basic thicknesses so the bottom still is thicker than the sides. And there's also once again a little extra thickness right next to the pipe holding heat and if I can hop in and cut in a line before that cools off I can take advantage of that and um, cut in a jack line without having to add a, a heat in between. Now while I cut in that jack line that form got a lot squatter so now I'm going to blow into the pipe just to round it out. Another thing that makes your life easier is giving that bubble time to cool down. So I cut out about 30-40 seconds of just waiting right there while I let the neck stabilize. You have to remember that that material that was just hot enough for you to cut in the jack line it still has heat. And if you hop in and try to take this heat while that part is still hot, then when you come out and try to stretch out the shape, that neckline will move around on you too. It'll get longer, it'll move to the side, and it'll just throw off the whole drop. So let it cool down so that you can heat just the very bottom so that only part that, that's the only part that stretches and you maintain the width up at the top of the pipe and your jack line doesn't move around on you. So I heated it, came out, held it, but you don't want an even stretch. You really want to aggressively stretch that material out longer. So I did a little overhand spin there so you could see it start to drop off the, gla the, the widest section a little bit more. In order to really emphasize that, I'm taking another heat right here that's a little bit shallower still. So that bottom part is really going to start to stretch even more aggressively and that's really going to set up that cooling tower shape. Here I'm going for that aggressive spin. Make sure you come out of that real smooth to keep everything on center. I was a little ungraceful there. But you see the shape drops out into that long skinny thing. But if you still have heat in the bottom, you can just blow that right up. Otherwise you might have to take a reheat. Either way, you should be able to blow it maintaining a little more thickness just on the bottom. So that thickness that I initially set up with the block and the starter bubble, that has carried all the way through this piece, allowing me to heat the bottom and spin it flat while keeping it thick enough to safely punty. So that's what happened there, but you can see the glass just naturally spun itself out into a flat bottom. Once again, I'm drawing that curve with the jack, starting right there in the middle of the constriction and then changing my angle and force, letting the jacks open up a little bit as they get closer to the edge and I draw that curve. So there's two ways of making the shape and I want to show you one more before we finish all this. And this way involves doing a lot of work on the punty, creating that stretch that middle section on the punty. So in this case, um, you're going to blow up a shape and punty something up that, uh, you know, maybe looks like this. And then finish your shape, or at least the top part and the bottom part. Get those two parts looking how you want. But the big thing is that this isn't going to be how you want. So what you're going to do is you're going to heat that middle section up either with a hand torch or a bench torch or maybe heating it in the glory hole and then come out, hold the pipe straight up and down or the punty straight up and down so that gravity is what actually stretches that material out for you. So 
Let's take a look at that. You're joining us halfway through the piece where I have just punnied up a little cup that I made using method one. So it's just broken off the blowpipe and the first order of business is to heat up the front part and flare that material open. So that's what's gonna happen here. So in this case, I'm going for sort of a straight sided top and bottom, but it can really be whatever you want. It doesn't matter. The top and the bottom are going to cool down and stay the same. The middle part is what you're going to heat up and change. So you just get the top and the bottom looking how you want and then build up heat in that center part. One thing that's kind of a subtle point, but uh, will help you make these really nice is to remember that you have to make that middle part thicker than you ultimately want it to be because it's going to stretch out. So if you make it as thin as you want it to be and then stretch it, it'll be too thin. So there we go, big heat on it. I'm gonna come out, continue doing some heating while stretching it. You can see it moving around on itself right there. And um, yeah, a lot of times when you're doing this, like you're heating, heating, and nothing's really happening, then all of a sudden, boom, it'll really start to move and stretch on you. Well, anyway, that's, I guess what I'm doing, just heating, wasting time, talking. I don't know what I'm saying right now. I just, I, I just can't stop talking. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now it's stretched out. I'm just getting a, giving it a second or two to stabilize um, so I can bring it up and true it up with the jacks a little bit. And there you go. And you'll notice that nice even thickness throughout the whole thing because I set it up thicker to begin with. So there's three different ways to go about making that shape. But there are three out of many ways and there's no one way that's going to be the best way all the time. What's going to be the best way for you is going to depend on what's important to you about that piece. So for example, method number one is really fast, which makes it pretty cool. But it's also very difficult to execute that on a larger scale. A smaller cup, relatively easy to handle, but as you start dealing with larger and larger amounts of glass, if you're trying to keep the whole thing really hot and cut in a jack line as it's dropping out and blowing the whole thing up in one go, it can get very difficult. So maybe if you're working on a larger scale, you use method two, which moving more methodically allows you to, you know, sort of control the process better. In addition to doing something like really controlling your proportions, because when you blow that ball, whatever dimension, whatever width you set by how big you blow that ball, and depending on how deep you heat, so that the glass kind of drops off from it, that, that really sets proportions for the shape as a whole. So if you're trying to nail some specific measurements on a you know, medium-sized piece, maybe that's a great way to go about doing it. But both those methods, method one, method two, both don't really help you out when it comes to making a shape that, that uh, is like we talked about with method three, where it has a really long, skinny you know, middle section. Because with method one and two, you're creating this shape on the blowpipe entirely. And once you go on the punty, a really long, thin, skinny neck is going to present you with some difficulties when it comes to working on the top part uh, for opening that up or inflating it or, you know, working on it more. So method three, by saving that most difficult part for the very end of the process, makes it very easy um, to achieve shapes like that, right? So anyway, the big idea is just that there's no one way to go about making a piece of glass. And if you look at the process, and how it relates to the material instead of just sort of following steps, then you'll be able to use different methods or combinations of these different methods in order to more efficiently, more reliably um, reach that end result, whatever that is. So anyway, that's a big idea. Hope that resonated with you. As always, I'd love to hear your questions and comments. You can leave them in the space below or contact me at glassblowersguide.com. And I'd also love to hear what you'd most like to see in the next videos that I make. But as always, wish you best luck in the hot shop. Thanks for watching.